Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to um, this session of the December January session for the out of home office hours. This is our foundational session. And uh, this is Scott Fischetti from Geopath. Just want to say Happy New Year and, and welcome and thank you again to everybody for joining this session. Um, and as typical, uh, if this is the first time you're joining one of the foundational sessions, typically with these sessions, what we do is we walk through all of the changes that you that have uh, occurred in the Insight Suite over the past month since our last session, make sure everybody knows how to use them in their current workflow and understand you know, how to pull any uh, inventory and metrics against uh, those, those new changes. Uh, so basically that's what we'll do today and we will tie it into as much as we can the use case for tomorrow's session. So in the advanced session, we really focus on the data and how to interpret the data and how to use that to solve clients' needs and to you know, use the new insights data for your day-to-day your -day work. So, um, and you'll see what the, the session is in, in a moment. And um, just want to give walk through a couple big updates. There's a lot of changes that have happened since the uh, beginning of the session. Hold on, and uh, sorry, I'm guessing was there people having a hard time hearing me? Yeah, yeah. Good. Sorry about that. So uh, hopefully um, everybody was able to at least hear what I was saying. We've hopefully fixed the volume issue, which also reminded me of a couple things. Um, I just want to say I'm also here with Brian Schaffer, as always, who will do the walkthrough of the uh, Insight Suite when we get to that point. And also, if you do have questions, and it seems like everybody's already on that, because you kind of I, I am just that there was problems with the um, with the volume. But if you do have any questions or anything, please reach out to us in the question widget and the uh, Zoom uh, interface. So one of the big things that's uh, also come back is our Inventory Explorer update. So I just want to let everybody know that the Inventory Explorer is now available. Honestly, most of the people on this session probably won't really need to use this session, this, this tool, but it is a great tool for, for non-members, for anybody who wants to explore DMA but doesn't really want to log into the Insight Suite. And uh, what it does is it provides uh, you know, limited functionality. So no impression measures are there. It really allows you to go in, uh, filter media types, explore, look for operators, and look for, you know, a specific geography. You can get down to zip code level if you want. And also too, if you have some specific spots, you wanna just see where they're located, you can copy and paste those in and even uh, create some inventory sets. So some similar functionality to what you see in the Insight Suite, but very, very limited. And to actually log in, it requires you to enter your an email address and then you get, you get a, a one-time use code that comes back to you in your email and you log in that way. So um, if there's time, we'll, we'll jump in and, and, and show you this tool. But again, if you're in the inventory, if you're in the Insight Suite, a lot of the functionality is very similar, similar use case to, to doing that. So lots of feature and functionality updates since our last session. So as of Monday, January 6th, a new uh, update to the Insight Suite came out. So we're going to talk about a lot of the uh, changes and um, updates, so to speak, that happened over the course of December. And um, that just to note, um, and it's important that because of the, the way the updates are going to be coming out in the new year, so in the next couple of months, we're going to change the cadence of these sessions. And so we'll talk about that at the end of this at the end of the session. So we're going to move them to uh, maybe earlier in the month versus later in the month to just account for the, uh, the cadence of the update. So one big thing that I'm excited to tell everybody about is that the map ability to map top zip codes and markets for a particular specific units is now back. I know everybody was excited to have this functionality return, so we're really excited that it is back. It's a really valuable piece of functionality that allows us to really show visually that, that movement that we all know is part of out of home. It's just because a unit is located in a particular zip code doesn't mean you're only reaching uh, people from that zip code. So this is, we're excited that this is back and, and I know and I'm sure a lot of you are as well. Another big feature uh, that came out or piece of functionality rather that, that came out is now the ability to create multi-market plans. And this is the screenshot is this is from the workspace module. So you now have the ability to look at um, your metrics across multiple markets and do combined markets. 
And similarly in the explore module, you can explore inventory across multiple markets as well. And you can see here the example that, you know, they, they're picking uh, New York, LA, Chicago, again, just for example, just to show the top three, top three DMAs. And also another big improvement uh, that I know a lot of uh, members were asking for is there, uh, you have now the ability to export up to 6,000 um, units, uh, spots so rather, anywhere in the, in the Insight Suite now. So whether it's, this is an example of an exported report, that's from, I believe, the workspace it looks like here. So again, you can see that we we're able to export uh, 3,278. Similarly, there was used to be a limit on the specific spots you could copy and paste in. Now that, again, is still 6,000. And similarly, when you export into uh, the Explore module, out from the Explore module, same thing, uh, 6,000 units. That used to be a cap of 1,000. So I, that's going to, I know, help a lot of, a lot of members. So again, excited to, to talk about that. Another big change is um, the mar in the market planning tool. If you look at that box in the left, the red box in the left corner, uh, that says plan TRP. And so previously it was labeled weekly TRP, but again, now it, it is actually plan TRP. And all, and there's also new metrics that are coming out in the plans as well. So the right column here in the bottom right box, that the red, the highlighted red box, target impression, target in market impressions are now available, as well as reach net available in these reports. So reach net essentially being the unique number of people that you reach in in your market. So excited about those changes as well. And just a note: if you previously created a plan in Workspace and you'd saved it. When you open up the plan again, it'll automatically regenerate all your metrics according and just know that it's a plan TRP and not a weekly TRP uh, that you're setting as your goal here. Okay. Um, and again, feel free to reach out to us with any questions on those kinds of things. So another, another big functionality change, uh, uh, you know, not change actually, addition, is the ability to do a secondary map in the Explore module and the layers and display options. And again, we'll show you how to use this as well. So you can see here um, with the, the drop-down menu, there's primary map and you can actually add a secondary map. And you can actually sync those so they can zoom and pan at the same level at the same time. But again, we'll show you some, some ways that you may want to use this, but here's a really high level example. Maybe you uh, want to look in the, uh, I believe this is the Atlanta area, you know, map, map the Burger Kings in, in an area and then look at some uh, inventory, you know, um, delivery, um, options from this is uh looks like the mcdonald's um you know people that have been to mcdonald's in the past 30 days looks for a unit across the the markets so again just if you want to be able to compare another way to use this is looking at two different sets of inventory options that you know maybe you've pulled one set for a client that is based on target target composition and then another set that's based on you know reach and you can start to look at those side by side so I think that'll be a really valuable piece of functionality as we start to move forward and start to work with the tool more and more in, in terms of planning. And um, another small change, the rest, the rest of the changes are a little uh, smaller in nature. I just wanna make sure everybody's aware of them. So the load safe scenarios has been moved from the filter inventory area into the actions area. Um, and that's to accommodate some more functionality that will be coming in the, in the near future. Also, the ability to uh, select county as a target market option in the Explore module is there now, as well as in the Workspace module. So you can select down to the county level for a market plan, as well as in the uh, Explore module. And also a little, little tip, a pro tip or tips and tricks. We tried as much as possible to give you a little heads up on how to maybe use, use some things a little more efficiently. So if you're, if you're trying to, if you're at the county level, because there's so many different counties, sometimes if you just getting to the area they want, you can get to by just putting in the abbreviation of the state and the comma, and that'll start to cluster and I'll just auto filter for that state. And then it makes an easier scroll through to find the actual county that you're looking for in that state. 
Of course, you can also just directly type in the state if you're, I mean, the, the county itself, if you, if you know the county. And then there's also uh, more ability to customize columns when, when you're exporting. So there's a whole host of different uh, columns that have been added or column options. So market name, market type, population, the number of weeks in the plan, as well as target audience and uh, target audience population are just uh, to name a few and listed there on the right side. And again, another, another feature in the filter inventory section that's just been added is this ability. So previously was their orientation, so directionality of it, spot size, and now this is for movement. And so what this essentially means, it's, it's essentially anything that is potentially has the ability to have spots or is rotating if you think of a, you know, a, a, a trifold board, you know, that, that has that kind of rotating imagery. So again, if, if that's important, it is a filter that you can add to it as, as well. And then the another addition is the addition of um, out-of-market impressions to the, the ability to look at. And this is looking at it in the table view in the explore module. So in the spot list, you can see here out-of-market impressions and percent of out-of-market impressions as well. So that's another nice addition to the tool. And then again, similar to the, the, the ability for the export and some other new columns also added in the table view or ability to, to, to have them there, or also take them out the DMA, the county level and the, the net reach. Okay, so I just want to pause. I know there's a lot of things I just talked about, a lot of changes to the, uh, or updates to the, to the Insight Suite. Just want to pause and give anybody a chance to, to see if there's any major questions. I know sometimes Brian handles them directly, so, um, but I'm just taking a hint, so nothing. Okay, great. So I want to just tee up the use case for tomorrow, which will kind of inform the rest of the session today. So what we're going to do, and this is something we try to do as much as we can, we want to build on our November use case. And if you recall, um, if, you, if you didn't get a chance to watch it, you can go to our Geek Out tab of our, of our website and watch it. But it was one we worked with uh, Bobby Gorzakowski from Outfront Media. And it was based around a fashion brand. So it's, a, it's, a, it was, it's a, obviously a made up brand, Maza. And it was set up as a new luxury fashion brand, trying to establish themselves in, in New York City as one of the you know, major US fashion markets. And they wanna compete directly with Gucci and Prada. And their, their target is obviously that, you know, anybody who would be a Gucci or Prada customer. So those, those young, trendy urbanites uh, as a potential market. And that led us to picking, uh, and it gave us the opportunity to talk about, if you look down here, the more detailed section, um, allowed us to talk about the prison premier segment. So, because we hadn't had a chance to talk about that or use those in any of our use cases, but we, we focused on the young Digerati, which again, we'll, we'll revisit that a little bit tomorrow, but their goal is to create high, you know, they want high impact placements to create large scale awareness quickly. And again, some of the thoughts around this too are like, how do you combine the data, right? We have all this data and we're really excited about it, but how, how do you combine that with local market understanding to really create your plans or to know which inventories to select? Because the two work together, the market knowledge as well as the, the data. And so what we're going to do now is look at the same use case from the other side, from an agency side. And we've done this before. And a lot of times when we've done this, where we've done the same use case and had an, an, an agency member come on to talk about it, it's really been, how do I get you know, I get it, I, I put up my RFP and I get all the inventory in and how do I go through that selection process? Well, we wanted to start further back this time and talk about how when an agency gets brief, how do they get to that RFP stage? And what are the key things that they need to have to, to help an operator? And so there's tips and tricks for agencies developing RFPs and also for operators as to, to, uh, to understand like, What's the process that an agency goes through before they even submit the RFP to operators to start to respond to? So I think it's a really neat look at one of these use cases and hopefully very valuable for, for anybody who wants to join. So really wanna encourage everybody to join that tomorrow 
and we'll remind you of that before we jump off the call. But right now, I want to hand it off to Brian, who's going to start to do a walkthrough and, and again, show you how to pull some of the data and how to use some of the, the new features and functionality that, uh, that came out this past month. Great. Thank you. All right, uh, just getting ourselves all switched over. So um, as Scott said and went through in, in the uh, PowerPoint beforehand, there's a lot of changes that came through sort of since the last time we did one of these to now. Um, so a good amount of what I'm going to do today is sort of split across two different scenarios just so we can go through some of these new features and go through them together so everyone can see sort of in a live demonstration how to use things. Um, so. For anyone who might be new on the call who's never been uh, inside the Insight Suite before, I just want to talk through a couple things before I go through. Um, when you first log in, you'll be dropped off at this page here. It gives you an overview of each of the different modules within the Insight Suite. Um, so the Workspace module, which Scott mentioned and I'll be in, in a little bit today, uh, is a planning tool. So sort of pre-campaign and you know campaign delivery and things like that. And you can keep all your different projects in one area and organize. Um, and we'll go through and I'll show how to do that. Uh, the Explore module is uh, sort of in my head, one of the main parts of the Insight Suite. It's the one that I use most. Um, and it's a very graphic, very live view of all the inventory in the system. And uh, it's a really sort of tactile way, the, way to get in there and explore um, different inventory. Um, the Places module is our Points of Interest module. Um, and so I'll talk about that. I'm not sure if I'll go into that today, but um, you can sort of use points of interest in conjunction with inventory and just sort of overlay things and see how things line up that way. Um, and then the reports module is something we're still working on. This is coming soon. And this will be more of a graphic approach to the data, post campaign analysis and things like that. Um, so I'm going to jump right into the explore module. Uh, like I said, this is kind of in my head, the, the main place I think of when I think of the insight suite. Um, and so I want to start with a couple things here, just sort of walk through this uh, just at a high level for anyone who's not been in here before. And then we'll kind of dive into uh, two different scenarios that we have for today. So um, in the Insight Suite here, there's a couple things uh, across the sort of layout that I just want to make mention of before we go through. Um, these metrics over here on the right hand side are always reflective of whatever audience and whatever inventory you have currently in your filter. So these, these will change as we make you know, changes to our audience and our inventory. So keep an eye on these metrics over here. I think it's always an interesting thing to see how these change as we sort of go through examples. Um, and then right here across the top are the four main uh, tabs that you use to operate the Insights or the um, Explore module of the Insights Suite. Uh, Define Target has a few different things within it. Um, I'm going to start with the Assign Market. Uh, here you can select your um, this actually has sort of two, function, two functions in one. Um, when you are using this assign market function here, you are doing uh, sort of one thing with your inventory and one thing with your audience. You're setting the geographic bounds for your inventory. So if I picked the New York DMA, for example, it would exclude all inventory outside that DMA. But it also sets your audience base as the residents of that DMA. So it sets your in market versus out of market. Um, so just a quick thing to note there. Um, as Scott mentioned earlier, county is a new addition to uh, the assigned market field here. And you can see they're all listed out by state. Um, but you can do DMA or CBSA as well. And for all of these, you can do multiple markets, which I think as of a couple of releases ago, that's a pretty new feature. Um, so from there, we've also got our select audience um, portion of this tab. And this is broken down into uh, three different categories. Uh, all of this is sourced through our partners at Claritas. Um, and so in the population tab here, we've got um, a lot of stuff that's sort of in line with our legacy systems. So, you know, demographics, sort of the, the breakdowns you'd expect, um, some things about work and commuting, um, and then household profile has things like rent amounts, mortgage status, uh, children in the home, uh, lots of interesting stuff here. Um, consumer profiles is, the biggest of the three categories. Um, there's over 8,000 variables spread across these three. And consumer profiles makes up a very large majority of that. Uh, and it's broken out into a bunch of different categories here. Um, you know, alcohol, environment, food and beverage, uh, items in the home, uh, psychographics, radio restaurants. So there's, there's a ton of stuff in here. 
Um, and it's really fun to just explore and sort of search for something and see what pops up. There's a lot of stuff in here. Um, and then finally, Prism Premiere is through our partners at Claritas, and this is their segmentation product. So there are 68 different audience segments here, uh, all with pretty funny names. Um, but these are just good, quick ways to sort of target an audience group if you have a general idea of who you're looking for. Um, so that's those two. And then schedule delivery, you can change your number of delivery weeks. By default, it's set at one week, everything. Um, you can look over here on the right-hand side, and you'll see what your um, what sort of week denomination you have set. It'll tell you right there. Um, filter inventory is exactly what it sounds like. It's, it's a lot of different tools to help you net this 602,000 pieces of inventory down to however few you want. So uh, you can do it by media type. And there's a bunch of different classifications here, so digital, non-digital, roadside, place-based. And then within each of these categories, like street furniture, for example, there are so many different classifications in here. Um, so, and these update and change depending on what market you're in as well. So these are always representative of whatever market you have filtered. Um, that's also true with the operators. So whatever market you're in, uh, it'll only reflect the numbers and operators, numbers of inventory and operators in that market. Um, you can also filter by media attributes. So as Scott was saying, the rotation is here. We've got orientation. Um, you can also do by size. Um, location, you can filter by a bunch of different geographies here, um, similar to how I was saying in the define target tab, when you set your assigned market, that both does your audience and your geography for the inventory. Um, and if you're doing it through the filter inventory here, this just does a geographic filter. So just to note that. Um, and here you can actually get down to county level and I believe zip code level as well. Um, specific IDs, if you have a bunch of geopath IDs, you can paste those in here. Um, you can also load some saved inventory sets if you have those. Um, and then thresholds, these are different sliders you can use to sort of meet a certain percentage of something and only see inventory for that. Um, layers and display options, uh, Scott mentioned a little bit, and I'll, I'll do one of my examples with it uh, a little bit later, but you can add a secondary map, and here's where you do that, and you control all those things. Um, and again, I'll go through that. Um, and then the actions tab has, you know, clear, save, retrieve, things like that, and also save scenarios. So um, let me just jump right in. We'll start with a, uh, an example. So um, this is kind of in line with the use case that we did last month and also that we're sort of reevaluating tomorrow's session. Um, so for this one, I'm going to start with the New York DMA. So to do that, we'll go define target and then assign market right here in the middle. New York DMA. So you'll see over here, these metrics will change a little bit once I, uh, once I apply this. And it'll also tell you uh, on the map, it'll show you how many pieces of inventory are in that uh, DMA. So we've got about, about 80,000 to look at here. Um, but that's a lot to start with. So let's get a little bit more specific. Um, as Scott mentioned briefly in the, uh, in the introduction, for this uh, use case that we were doing, uh, we were actually using one of the Prism Premier segments, which is uh, a newer thing. We haven't done a we hadn't done an example with that yet, but so I'm going to keep rolling with that one. Um, so the one we used for that uh, for that use case was Young Digerati. Uh, so I'm going to apply that, and as as I do that, keep an eye on the uh, target impressions because that's going to drop quite a bit now that we're looking at a very specific subset of the population. Two percent of the New York market, apparently. Um, so for this example, I'm going to leave it at one week. Uh, let's go to filter inventory. Um, for this one, I want to do just uh, non-digital bulletins. So I know those are freestanding structures, non-digital bulletins, bulletins. So I'll start with that. Filter that down a little bit more. OK, so we've got just under 2,500 to look at that fit this sort of criteria here. Okay, spread out pretty pretty across the market. Let me get in a little closer. Okay, so uh, over here on the right-hand side, you see uh, the count of the inventory that we're looking at, but also these three drop-downs here. Um, and this sort by drop-down gives you a lot of different options where you can actually um, start to filter through and look at how these different boards perform against a handful of different metrics. Um, so as I'm sort of scrolling through, you can see a lot of the different metrics that you can do here. Um, by default, it's at target comp percentage, um, which we generally explain as the units most efficient at reaching whatever your audience is. Um, so I'm going to leave it at that. And I want to select 
the top 25 bulletins in this DMA for the comp percentage against my audience. Let's take a look what that looks like. Okay. We got one down here on Staten Island, it looks like, some up near Fort Lee, but mostly in Manhattan, Brooklyn, and Queens. Um, and so for, for this sake, for the sake of this part of the example, um, this is as far as I want to go with these units. So I'm gonna, I'm, I'm happy with these, I want to save these. Um, and so what I can do now is if you go over to this save as dropdown, you have a couple different options. You could save something as a new inventory set, so you can call it back up later. Um, you could add it to an existing one. Um, you can save it as a scenario so you can use it in the workspace module, or you could download it as a, as a CSV um, and just look at it in Excel. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to save as an inventory set, and we will call this uh, Young, Young Gujarati New York Bulletins. Okay. Um, you know, I'm actually not going to save this because I did this earlier and I don't want to double save, but that's what I did here. Um, so that's that's how you would just sort of a simple way start with a large group of inventory and you can start to filter down. Um, and there's a lot of different ways that you can do this using these drop downs here. Um, but so that was, uh, that was kind of one of the things that we were looking at. But one of the new features that Scott mentioned that came back is the ability to look at the top zip codes and top market areas. Um, and so for every, uh, every piece of inventory that's in the system, when you click on it, you'll see this will pop up. Um, so it gives you a little bit of an overview of what the unit is. And if you click here for more details here on the back side, we've got some metrics down here at the bottom um, and these top market areas. This is at the DMA level. So it's looking like 3% of the weekly impressions come from outside the DMA, which is interesting. Um, but this is interesting too, actually. The top zip codes, the highest one is 10%. So there's 90% outside this one zip code, but it's a pretty small percentages, which is interesting. Um, but let's take a look at what that looks like. And so when you hit the map it button, it actually opens up a second map on the right hand side. And you'll see it's this, it'll be this kind of purple uh, map across the US. And take a look at that. So this is the actual uh, audience footprint of the impressions for this board on any, any given week. Um, you can see largely grouping to the Northeast, but some spread across the whole country. But let's get, let's get closer because I want to look at the actual zip codes. I want to see sort of the breakdowns. Okay, we can start to see the zip codes. That's pretty cool. So um, here you can see, and the key is right here, uh, the highest uh, amount of impressions come from the darkest purple zip codes here, but oops, zoomed in a little too far. Let me readjust this. Um, but you can see actually over here, the pretty good spread around, around the whole area. So it looks like this uh, board is in this one zip code, but it's got pretty high draw from these other ones, uh, including some in Queens, some outside New York City. Uh, so it's just interesting to see the actual footprint of the audience of these uh, boards, because we knew this story all along that, like Scott was saying, people come from outside where the board is and pass by that board, but um, it's, it's just really cool to be able to visualize that. Um, so that was, yes, I'm going to close that map. Um, so now that we've saved our inventory set, uh, as you guys remember, I have that inventory set of hundred I saved. Um, I'm going to actually just do select none. So I'm just going to clear off my map because I want to evaluate this set of inventory against something else. So I'm going to open up the layers and display options. And so right now you can see I've got my primary map selected and let me just go to my display options and I'm going to unselect. In, in this display options section here, you can actually uh, really customize your map. You can deselect or select things here, but I'm gonna clear the map of all the unselected inventory. So we've got my one map. I'm gonna go and add my inventory set that I saved earlier for those bulletins. So uh, you can see all your available layers on the left and you can add them to the right-hand side. Um, so let's find that Young Digerati uh, bulletins, okay. And I'm going to make this uh, sort of an orangey color. And I'll hit apply view. And so that'll uh, map out on this map here. Um, but what we can do now with this split map ability, you can see this plus sign right here, add secondary map. So this is going to split my screen in half and add a second map, uh, each with its completely separate and fully customizable display options, just like the other one has. 
So we can add a place set, an inventory set, a single place. So we can add uh, a lot of different things here and then completely customize it just the same way we would the other one. Um, so let me add the, the I, I pulled another um, earlier, another unit set of 100 units, but this was actually um, bike fillers, the sort of bike rental things around the city. Um, and I wanted to see what the uh, comp index for that looked against the same target. I wanted to see how different they might be. So let me just get a sort of good standout color against it. And I will add that to my secondary map. And you can actually over here, you can uh, edit these and name them so you can keep track of them as well. So let me zoom in and take a look at my, uh, my secondary map. And then I can look at them uh, side by side and actually compare these two inventory sets in this case. Getting a little closer. All right, so I'm actually going to close this and I'm going to hit this sync button here. And what it does is it sets your two maps equal so you can zoom and pan sort of in tandem with each other. So you can say, you know, if I wanted to look at this area of the city specifically, here's the, uh, you know, the spread of this inventory set versus that inventory set. So um, this is just kind of one way that you could use this functionality here. Uh, there's a lot more that you can do with this, but I thought it was, it was an interesting thing to see and I wanted to show everybody just a little bit about how you can do that. Um, so that was, that was the first scenario I was going to run through. Um, were there yeah. any questions? Yeah. Hey, uh, Brian, just before you go into the second scenario, can mm -hmm. you go and click on a unit and show how to map the, uh, to create the heat map again? So the map it functionality. Yeah, sure. Great. We're going to do it from here. I think. So if you just select, uh, so you select one of them, click here for more details. And then it is, uh, in this, you can, here, we can look at it in this, uh, top market areas one. Um, but it's just this map it button here. This one would do it against the DMA, but when the top zip codes loads, uh, you could do it against the, the zip codes there. And basically what it'll do when you hit map it, it'll open up this view on the right-hand side and um, show that footprint. But it might just do it here since I already have it open. Let's see. It looks like it's about to. Yeah, there you go. So there's the unit and here are the zip codes that it, the audience comes from. So um, yeah, so that was that. Um, so, um, sorry. So there is one more question just since we're here right now. The, um, and there's a question about will there be a report associated with the zip codes? And the way I'm interpreting that question is, you know, we see the percent. So with this example, one, the, Mm -hmm. zero, 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 0003 is four percent. Would you be able to list out all the zip codes and the percents? At this point, uh, the answer is no. But that is a a, a good piece of um, information and a good request. So I'm going to submit that as a uh, potential uh, request. So. All right, great. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to kind of round out this uh, this is scenario, and we'll jump into a second one um, because there's some other uh, features that I wanted to show. Uh, so let me just close that out. And sorry, one second. So the other scenario, let me, uh, I'm gonna go up to the actions tab here and then hit clear view. And what that'll do is that'll actually reset everything. So you can just go actions, clear view, and then reset all. Uh, and that'll basically take you back to square one. Let's see. Okay. So the second scenario that I wanted to work in uh, actually starts in the workspace module. So we're gonna go there to start. Um, and like I said earlier, the workspace module is a planning tool um, and you can sort of do your pre-campaign and also your campaign delivery in, uh, in one place. So let's start a new project. We'll call this one uh, January session. And you can call them anything you want. Uh, these, you can give them descriptions. Uh, the projects are really just projects and the scenarios, you can name them however you want to keep track for yourself. Um, so this is the inside of my project view. Uh, if I come to this edit icon up here, I can again add a description or I can also add tags. Um, and to actually start a scenario or to do one of the market plans or inventory plans, you need to, you need to create a new scenario. So that's what I'm going to do here. Uh, add scenario and I'll just call this, um, call this posters Atlantic. So my scenario is going to be uh, in the Atlanta market and we're going to be looking at posters. So that's, I'm just going to name the, the file that. 
for the session, uh, sorry, scenario that. Um, and so when you make a, when you make a new scenario, you have basically two different plans that you can run, uh, a market plan and an inventory plan here. Um, and so a market plan is uh, a market discovery tool. It's, it takes and looks at all of the units in a given market that meet a certain criteria and looks at the most sort of normalized ones. And basically what you can do is say, you know, I have this many TRPs I want in my plan. How many units am I going to need to get me that many TRPs about? Um, and again, it's, it's been sort of calculated out. So it might be more, it might be less, but that's, that's an averaged out. Um, so let's do a market plan here since I was, uh, I'm doing a new scenario. So let me try a new market plan. So uh, I know that for this example, I want to be looking at the units in Atlanta and my audience for this one, I'm just going to do 21 plus. So the population demographics age and 21 plus. And I'm going to remove my person zero plus. I don't need that, but you can add as many different audiences as you want. Um, I'm not going to select a specific operator. I'm just going to look at everybody. And again, my media type for this one was going to be posters. So freestanding, non-digital poster, poster. I'm going to add that. Okay. And for my plan TRPs, let's say, uh, let's say we want to go 85. It's, and it's, mm, let's see, two weeks. Sure. Um, so that's my plan. We've got 85 TRPs over two weeks and everything else looks good to me. So I'm going to hit generate plans. And so basically what this is going to do now is look in the Atlanta DMA at the audience 21 plus, and it's going to help me figure out how many uh, posters I'll need to get at least 85 TRPs across my two weeks. So I think I hit generate plans. There we go. Hey, it's still loading. Okay. So I will need 41, it looks like. And you know what, if you wanted to, you can always go back and you can hit edit and you can, you know, change these things around. So you can do all that, but say it's about 41, right? 41. So I'm going to save my scenario. I know that I want to go into this market, look at these units and I have about 41, maybe 50 that I would want to pull uh, to sort of get around that TRP benchmark. So uh, now that you've done something like that, you can actually go back into the insight suite. Sorry, back into the explore module of the insight suite. Um, and so for this one, again, I was looking in the Atlanta market. So we'll select the market, apply. Okay, and our select audience, I'm going to set my audience again to just persons 21 plus. Population, demographics, age, and then right here, apply. Okay, and so this is, uh, you know, this is about where I, I've gotten to. And I have uh, separately, I'm going to pull it over so you can see it. Uh, I have an Excel sheet of about, I think it's 1,100 posters in Atlanta that I might want to pull. So I've got this, this big group here. I'm going to select all of these uh, unit IDs right here. And uh, this is actually one of the new features. And the reason that I'm doing this is to show uh, how you can do this. Uh, so you've got a big group of, uh, of unit IDs up to 6,000 now. Um, you can just copy those and go right into filter inventory, specific IDs. Um, and in this case, they are geopath IDs. So I'll just paste those in and hit apply. And so again, this was 1100 units. Um, so we'll just let that load. And it looks like we got 1100 there and it's just authenticating. Yeah, so here you can see we entered 1100 units, 11,000 valid, um, and it will show you, uh, if you enter something that's either invalid or it doesn't recognize it, it'll let you know here. Um, but this is huge because before this, we couldn't do nearly this many. I think it was a couple hundred. Um, and so now you can do up to 6,000. Uh, and this also applies for exporting. So like 
if I were to look at all of these units here and I had about 4,000 that I wanted to export inventory uh, reports on, I could do that. Um, so I think, I think that was about all I had uh, for the new features I wanted to run through. Um, were there any questions we needed to address or anybody had? Um, just want to, uh, there's one question. Let's see if we can go back. Sorry, I know I'm far away from the mic. Let's go back to the, um, the there's been a lot of questions about the uh, media attributes, the rotating. And actually, this was a new change too. That I think in our screenshot we took yesterday, it was movement. Um, and it's actually been changed to rotating, which I do think is a better, um, a better definition, but there's some questions as to what does all this really mean. So if you're looking, so rotating all right now, that, that's just kind of the, the resting state, so to speak, because it mixes things that are rotating and not. And when we're talking about rotating, we're specifically talking about the, the units themselves, not whether or not like the, the vinyls are moved around or the, the structures or anything like that. It is like, does that, um, unit that frame have the ability to have flips for example number of spots or is it a tri tri vision board that that kind of moves in the sense that the the image rotates so it's really we're talking about the the image itself and not necessarily the the structure or what's put put on there um, and I hope that, that that clears it up a little bit. And so let's say you wanted to look at a set of units that has a mix of rotating and non-rotating. Essentially, that's the default state. So if you just want to look at anything that just has rotating, um, sorry about that. I thought um, my, I thought my um, Zoom was turned off on my laptop. Um, but anyway, if you want to um just find things that are that are spots you know have multiple spots or um like i said with the the, the trivisions you would click yes um, but if you don't want any of those kind you'd click no and that would automatic automatically filter but if you don't care at this point when you're starting your initial review of inventory you would just keep it at the default state of all for right now and i hope that helps i mean i mean if it doesn't uh, ping us with another question so sorry about that um, yeah, we just actually got another question, uh, and I was trying to answer that when I clicked away. Uh, the question is, is there uh, any information available that has descriptions for the Prism Premiere segments? Uh, yes, there is. So in this help button over here, uh, you can just search, uh, you could search Prism, you could search for a specific one. Um, so for example, I could do the Young Digerati that I did, Young Digerati. And there are little articles for each of these. So it'll tell you a little bit about, you know, who they are and what they are. Um, but if you click this little link button here, this will actually take you to the support site for the Insight Suite, um, which has all of these uh, segmentation uh, segments here. So there's a, a big list here uh, with each of them and a description for all of them. So that is here. And uh, I also don't want to um, speak for our developers, but I do believe the ultimate vision is when you are in the Insight Suite to have a little information button next to it that you can maybe scroll over and get more information. I know that has been talked about, and I do think that would be a nice feature to help with these Prism Premier segments. Because again, if you don't use them all the time, it's really hard to know what each one means. So again, there's definitely information here, but we do want to try to make it easier to, to use them in the future as well. Cool. Uh, are there any other questions? If, since we do have a, a few, since we do have a few minutes, um, not to put you on the spot, Brian, I think it'd be great if we can just quickly do a, a login to the Inventory Explorer. So let's go to our website sure. and you can show everybody where the where it is. Um, so there's a button right on our homepage. It's also on our tools page as well, but you can, um, it's that middle button. So if you uh, want to go there and then you we could um, enter a our, um, your email address and then you'll get a password like we said and it's and it's very quick yeah, uh, it takes less than a minute to be honest you know if, if not even quicker so yeah I, I just got, got it. It. I already got it so and it's a number code, a six-digit code. 
submits it. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, that's right. I copied it with a space. Hold on. And there, I'll type it in. Yeah. And submit. There we go. And once you're in, you'll you'll see it. It's very very similar to the Insight Suite, just with a lot more limited functionality. So basically, you're really working with the inventory itself, right? Mm -hmm. And again, because this is a public-facing tool, no impression data is uh, available. It's really just to help someone understand inventory operators, media types in a particular market or particular area. And there's some level of ability to create custom maps and, and things like that. But again, much more limited than the, the Insight Suite itself. So, um, and you can see Brian, you know, picked the Atlanta DMA and again, you could similar drop down features and things like that for the, uh, for the rest of the tool. I'm just going to quickly check to see if there's any additional questions. So I'll make sure we're answering. I know there is that we can. Um, I think, uh, sorry, uh, I'm just uh, checking in as Brian's uh, filtering there. Yeah, so yeah, like Scott was saying, it's, it's very similar to the Insight Suite um, visually, um, and you can filter pretty similarly to how you can in the Insight Suite. Um, and again, there's these layers and display options here. You can sort of customize a little bit here. Um, but nothing to do with audience or any metrics. So it's just sort of physical attributes and locations, and that's about it. Okay. Um, yes, so we've got a, 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 another good question about the ability to create custom markets, which I know is a, a feature in some of our other tools right now. So while you have the ability to kind of stitch together counties, mm -hmm. can you save that and have that to go back to? often and at this point I believe the answer is is no but a workaround for that is to create a project like that in your workspace and then go to that um, mm. and use that as a starting point but uh, that is a good question and I'm going to push that to our developers as well I do we do appreciate all these kinds of questions because it does help us to uh, know what what types of functionality are needed and, and I do know our developers are on this call as well listening in so um, they're hearing this in real time as well too. So, so thank you for some of those questions. Um, and then another question was about um, um, the ability. So if you're in the workspace or even here, uh, Brian, if you can go to define target, you can see the options are for, uh, for scheduled delivery uh, It maxes out at 12. And uh, the, the ability to do custom weeks of delivery is, co is coming. And I know sometimes people, if somebody has a permed out uh, piece of unit that you know you may want to look at 52 weeks so again that ability is coming over the next uh, two months as well cool great um, and so just want to maybe jump back with just a few housekeeping things uh, as we're winding up and um, if you want to go back to the PowerPoint deck yep. cool um, so again as, as you're thinking of other questions Please, please submit them as, as we're kind of winding up the, the session. Happy to try and answer anything we can. If there are things we didn't get to, please reach out to us to geek out, but we'll also try to, to reach back out to you um, independently uh, outside the session if we, if we didn't get to answer all of your questions. So I do want to just uh, plug tomorrow's session. So there is still time to sign up for that session. And again, like we said, you know, we're going to be extending the use case we did in November to really look at it from a, a different point of view. So from a, from an agency perspective, but also in those early stages, Hey, I met with the client today. I got briefed. What happens next? What are my next steps? How do I get to that RFP stage and how do I create an RFP that allows me to get apples to apples when I'm submitting it out to different operators across the market? And that's one of the key things we'll focus on. And then, um, so th I did mention this earlier in the call. So, the, the cadence of the Insight Suite updates are going to be early in the month. 
And so we looked at kind of our schedule of webinars we've been doing the last Thursday and Friday of every month that had been working for us for, for, for quite a while since last May or even longer than that. But we thought it would be best to, to change the cadence of these and, and do our next set of sessions in February and mid, mid February. So that allows the next iteration or the next set of updates and features and functionality changes to come out in the insight suite and then allows us to kind of be more closer to when those changes occur. So everybody has a chance to, uh, you know, uh, get some kind of education on them as, as quickly as they happen. So the next set of sessions, and we're going to do this moving forward, uh, February 13th from 2 to 3 p.m. and then February 14th, so Valentine's Day mm -hmm. from uh, 2 p.m. to, oh, actually, uh, apologies, that, that should be, um, it's going to be a Friday, and we typically do the Friday sessions from um, 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. So uh, we'll make that change for tomorrow's session, just so it's clear. So February 13th and 14th, and we're going to be doing them in the, the middle of the month moving forward. And I hope that works for everybody as well. Um, as always, if you missed any of the previous sessions, you can get to them in our Geek Out, through our Geek Out tab, and scroll down to the Out of Home Office Hours. Top um, six most recent are always there as thumbnails, but there's also the link to click to and get to our entire library of sessions. So again, um, if you think of a question after the session or if we didn't get to quite answer your question or we tried to answer it and didn't quite get to, to the essence of the question, please uh, reach out to us at geekout at geopath.org. We're always happy to help and provide as much information as, as we can. So I um, want to say thank you to everybody for joining. Appreciate everybody. Hope everybody's having a great start to their new year. And I hope to see a lot of you back here tomorrow for the advanced session with uh, Enza and the rest of the team here. So thanks a lot and have a great day, everyone.